All right, welcome back. We are now inside the Denungwan Tomb Complex. Uh, we just passed through this gate here, and it's about 3,000 won per person to come inside. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys the massiveness of these mounds. Now, again, these are for the previous kings and queens that lived uh, in the, during the Shila Dynasty. And a lot of times you think of like tomb, it's just kind of a, a small mound or something like that. But uh, let me show you how wrong you are if you think that. Look how massive these mounds are. These things are super huge, but so beautiful. I'm lucky that I uh, was able to come out here while the grass is still pretty green. Uh, but coming here during the certain seasons, such as uh, winter and spring, these seasons get very lovely. Uh, in the winter, of course, these are just full of snow and piled with snow on top of each other. Uh, during the spring season, I believe there's a lot of cherry blossoms that are around. Uh, and fall season, it's, it's okay, it's nice. The trees all have a different color, but the mounds are quite dry and the grass is quite is dead and brown, which has its own nice aesthetic to it. But uh, I prefer seeing this lush green that we have now today. It's very beautiful. We're just gonna take a walk around. And under one of these mounds, I'm not sure which one, there's a museum that kind of details the uh, Shila Kingdom the Shila Kingdom just a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a walk and show off a little bit of the park. Again, if you're in um, if you're in Huang Huangidanggil, which you can kind of see over in that general direction, it's very close. It is within walking distance. So I do suggest kind of coming pretty early to get a nice parking spot, park somewhere near Huangidanggil, and then uh, just walking over here and taking the day out of it. Uh, but they do advertise that this place is really very beautiful at night. I believe they have a lot of lights that light up the mounds and everything. Uh, and they close at 10. So it does kind of emphasize that they, they like having people come over at night to see a different side of the park. There are many people sometimes that are quite disrespectful and try to climb on the top of these mounds. Uh, but there are people uh, working in the park that uh, do enforce telling them like, hey, you cannot climb on these basically. Uh, these are sacred. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, and I believe this line is to go into the museum, to be honest. Wow, that is a long line to go inside the museum. Uh, hopefully we can get in uh, sometime soon. Okay, after, after waiting in line for so long, we're finally able to go inside. Uh, they have a lot of uh, strict measurement. They, they have a lot of strict precautions before going in. But uh, excited to go in and show you guys how the tomb is made and everything. All right, we're inside. Just had to take the temperature, but this is what the inside would look like of the tomb. So all the big mounds that you guys see outside is this huge layer of kind of dirt and rock. And over here, where everyone is leaning, we can see the tomb. So this is what the tomb would actually look like. Which is very cool. So under each of these mounds, there's something very similar to one of these. This is all stuff that they've discovered. And I don't believe they've disturbed the tomb of the other uh, kings and queens that reside uh, in this park. So here's the rest of the museum where they kind of detail some of the artifacts that they've dug up and discovered. And as you can see, you can kind of enlarge everything. And they go over a detailed description of what these things were used for as well. It's pretty much the whole tomb museum. Uh, we're back over here. Um, 
I felt like they had an explanation last time that detailed how this structure was made, but just you can kind of already see, right? There's just, uh, so around the tomb, they piled uh, rocks. So they in put, well, let me go in, in order here. Uh, so you have the king resting in this kind of wooden box room. Of course, there's no glass or anything like that. And I believe this uh, wooden structure is a bit newer, uh, but the tomb was surrounded with piles of rocks kind of all squeezed together. And then later the rocks are then piled on top with, I think, I believe it's a, a thin layer of uh, clay or wood and then piled on with dirt and then another extra layer of rock. And then on top of that, I believe they have uh, dirt and covering this huge kind of rock structure, which is very cool. The very interesting way to make the tomb. And uh, we'll go outside, there is a signboard for it. Uh, but this was the Chong Ma Chong uh, tomb slash museum. The only one that we can enter, the only mound we can answer. But let's go ahead to the sign and see if they detail how the tomb exactly was made. But I believe from my uh, memory, the last time I saw an explanation for the tomb and how it was made, that's how they make these or how they used to make them, which in my opinion, I think is a very, uh, genius way uh, en engineering a it is a very intuitive way to uh, make the tomb ah uh, there we go here we say so i was partially correct i'm just reading the sign for you guys but yes it was a wooden coffin where the king or slash queen was uh laid to rest and then the tomb was then covered with boulders and rocks and then covered with uh, earth basically, until it became these giant mounds that we see today. And they have existed since, well, since ancient Chila times, basically, which is just amazing. It's really cool to see the contrast between, like, this very peaceful park and, like, the uh, Hanok-style buildings that are behind the wall as well, where Huang Yidangir is. Uh, but we did see a sign uh, in case anyone is curious uh, what the crime is for trying to climb one of the hills. Uh, you may be subject to a 20 million won fine or two years of jail time. So if you think uh, you really want to climb one of those hills or you feel like it's something that you have to do or must do, uh, think, about the, uh, think about the consequences of your actions if you want to do that is my, uh, my advice. Because they take this stuff very seriously, as they should. No one should be climbing them. But uh, just thought that was a bit interesting uh, for what the punishment should be if you are, uh, if you try to think you can climb it. God, this forest is very nice. We've done a lot of things in Yongju so far, but I think coming to the tombs is very nice. It's very peaceful. It's a nice time. Just one of the many reasons that I love coming to Gyeongju. I would say that if I didn't teach English in Seoul, Gyeongju is one of the cities I wouldn't mind teaching English in and living out here. Sure, it may not be as big as Seoul and there's not as many like places to go to, but it's just so nice. I really enjoy it out here. I'm not sure why they have the middle gate closed, but I do have a theory, maybe because uh, only kings and queens can go through the middle gate and technically everyone else is supposed to go in through the side but I think this is uh, I think they said that this is the tomb of King Michu is what they said yeah I believe this is the tomb of King Michu uh, but it seems a very, very popular destination for people to come to It is very nice out here. I can imagine this in winter too. It'd be very beautiful. Nice. So I was right. It is the tomb of King Michu, which is a great name, by the way. He was the 13th king. Uh, I was just reading up on the, there's a sign next to the, the door you can see over here. But uh, yeah, he was a, apparently he was a pretty, pretty cool king from what I gathered on the, uh, from the signboard, but 
Uh, he defended the Shila kingdom from Bekja attacks repeatedly. And then uh, after he passed away, uh, there's another king, Yurje, Yurje, I think is how you say it. Um, they were also uh, being attacked. And um, they had like mysterious, there's like a legend that says they had mysterious soldiers that helped them fight with bamboo leaves. They had bamboo leaves in their ears. And then after the fighting was done, uh, the soldiers kind of retreated. And when they tried to find the soldiers, uh, they found uh, bamboo leaves atop this mound over here, which made people believe that uh, King Michu from the grave sent soldiers to uh, defend his country, which I think is a very cool engine, by the way. Just kind of imagine like a dead king that wants to protect his kingdom so bad, uh, even beyond the grave, he sends like spirit soldiers, basically. And I think that's really, really rad. A really cool piece of history. Glad that they had something for me to read in English and that I can share with you guys. But I guess that's why he's one of the tombs that most people visit. Seemed like a pretty great king. Such a nice park to come visit. Guys, seriously, if you ever come to Korea, I highly recommend making Yongju one of your places to visit because this place is so incredible. It's not overly large, but it is a fairly good sized park to come and take a walk, relax, take in the scenery, kind of learn a little bit of the history of the Shila Kingdom. Chon Ma Chong is like where we want to go, uh, where the long line was, which is over there. But we're just taking a walk around so you guys can see the surrounding environment. You guys can see this long line, right? Uh, there's nothing too special. I think just people really want to take a picture in this very uh, picturesque spot. Like this is a very, very Instagrammable spot. And uh, I think that's why a lot of people are waiting, but otherwise there's not anything here. Uh, I guess it's just a nice view of the, um, one of the sp like kingly mounds in the background. It is a very nice spot, but I'll save you guys the trouble of waiting in line. You guys can just see it here. It is very nice. But I don't believe there's a need to take a picture. <laughs> I think just seeing it is enough. All right, I just want to wrap up with some final thoughts. Uh, we're going to move on to our next des destination. We're going to grab some food in Hwangidangir and then move on to the palace. That's the last couple of things we're doing today. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the view around the park. This place is really amazing. I do recommend coming out here and checking it out for yourselves. Check out the Chong Mandong. Chon Ma Chong uh, Museum in the hill, uh, as well as just walking around taking all the pictures and videos that you want. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Dead Room One and uh, look forward to our next place to visit. Okay, welcome back, everybody. As you can see, it's uh, quite a change of scenery. I believe this is the, the first time we've had a video at night, and it is packing here at nighttime. Uh, there are actually a lot of people here, uh, whether it's good or bad. Uh, but yeah, we're at the Donggung Palace. This is the last stop for to, uh, today's Gyeongju trip. Uh, the reason I came here at night is that the palace is all lit up. Now, you could come during the day and it's still quite beautiful, but I wanted to show you guys the palace and the Wurji Pond at nighttime and how it glows and everything. A lot of places, a lot of historical places, when you come out here, they do recommend to come out at night, as we did with the tomb earlier and the, uh, the bridge as well. There's a very nice bridge that you can go across. And it's all lit up and it's incredibly beautiful. So let's go ahead and go on inside and check out the palace and the Wurji Ponds. Okay, we have officially entered the palace area and they do have a kind of, you can see people coming in from this way. There's actually a set path that you just follow along and it'll take you around the whole palace. This is the crown palace uh, where, well, basically royalty would stay. And uh, this is around the time of the Three Kingdoms period in Korea. It was believed that they held a lot of parties here, so they were partying it up at this, uh, at this palace. But there's a lot of really cool structures and things to see uh, at the palace. So we're just going to kind of walk around and see this awesome nighttime view. Hopefully it's actually visible enough for all of you. I really want to show off the Wurji Pond. It has such a nice, nice, nice view. 
Wow. God, the orange glow too is so nice. Look at that. So this is like the main central area that we cannot get to, but you can just take a picture and record and all that, but it's completely inaccessible to the public. No one can actually go over there, but this is kind of the main pond that everyone comes out to see. And there are many different sections that we can kind of go around it as well. This place is amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Just more views of the beautiful pond. Look at that view, guys. This is the kind of view you can't get if you come during the daytime. So incredible. And we're just going to be walking along this path as well. So no worry, we're going to get plenty of shots of the, of the pond as well as more of the palace. This is kind of like the, uh, the biggest pagoda you can come out and see. But uh, God, it looks so cool, lit up with all the lights. I don't know, it's, it's quite different from uh, going to Gyeongbukgong, right? Where you can see all the, the nice structures and everything in the daytime. And as I said, you can come here during the day. It is absolutely possible to come out here during the day and enjoy the palace but I think just it has such a different kind of feel to come out here at night and see the palace, how it's all lit up, which I think is a very nice touch. But here we're gonna see a diorama of kind of what the grounds look like. As you can see, this is kind of what the whole palace itself looks like. With the Warji Pond you can see around. This place is very spectacular. You can see more of the ponds kind of lit up. And in this little pagoda, we can see, I keep saying pagoda, but it might be not correct, but they kind of give some tidbits of information of different uh, artifacts that they've found and preserved and all of that. But for me, it's mostly the view that I really enjoy. I can just imagine being out here during this time, uh, it must have been quite the relaxing place to come to and enjoy your parties. Oh, it's so nice. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to come at night. You can see the reflection uh, of some of the pagodas in the water reflecting with the light too, and it makes it just that much cooler. So let's go ahead and venture into the magical forest. Everyone is taking pictures. So yeah, there's this bamboo forest over here that looks super scary if you try to go behind it. Uh, but yeah, we just keep following this path through the trees. And you guys can see in the background over there, it's incredibly dark. It just feels like something's going to come out and gotcha. Just kidding, guys. There's nothing there. Or is there? You can see more reflection. It doesn't even look like it's water. It just looks like the real thing, but just reverse. Yeah, this is the palace, guys. This is worth coming out here at night and spend your time during the day. Go to the different places that, that I checked out today. Kind of have lunch, have dinner in Hwangidang gear, and then come out here at night to finish your day. I think it's a pretty awesome plan if I say so myself. I really hope that the camera does it justice for you guys. This place is so cool. So you guys can see this little ba uh, basin or basin, right? And that there's like this kind of channel that runs into it. Well, because uh, royalty is so special and uh, they deserve to be treated as such, uh, when the kings and princes and queens and all of that, they were partying, uh, this, they didn't want to move when they were drinking and having their snacks and all of that. So you can see that the canal kind of runs all across the palace and the servants 
they would put little trays uh, with snacks and drinks on them and then just kind of have it float down the river, basically. And then wherever they were, they could then pick up the little tray and have their drink and snack wherever they were sitting and wherever they were partying, which I think is the best. It's just laziness at its best. It's incredible that they could have this kind of setup for them. Uh, Got to give them props for thinking of a thinking of this kind of ingenuity uh, as kings and queens and uh, royalty, basically. All right, we have come to the end of our little tour of the palace and the Warji Pond. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was uh, visible enough for you guys. It is nighttime, but I think it's been bright enough uh, to see the various uh, things at the palace. Uh, there's just kind of a couple main pagodas to, to see. There's the just the magic and mysticalness of walking through the trees and the reflection of the pond and all that. I really think coming out, out here at night is a top, top, top thing to do. I mean, make it, a, make it a day, right? Come out here during the day, see it during the day, go hang out and do some other stuff and come back here at night. Uh, I think it's just such a good idea to come out here at nighttime, basically. I think just having that difference, that stark difference between the daytime and nighttime is really, really, really cool. But this is kind of the last place that we're visiting in Gyeongju. Tomorrow we're heading back up to Seoul, so we're not doing too much tomorrow. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the kind of two-day tour of Gyeongju. It's been really fun being out here. Again, it's my one of my top favorite places to come out to. It's such an incredible city. Uh, so beautiful, so peaceful. There's other things I wanted to show off. There's the Bruguksa Temple and things like that, but we just didn't have enough time to go and do everything. So uh, I would like to come out here again and try to show all the things that I wasn't able to, uh, to show you this time. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you like my videos, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed already, that'd be cool. I hope you guys enjoy the content and hopefully the microphone is actually a bit better. Uh, I think that it's more clear for you guys uh, than just me talking through the, uh, the audio of the phone. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And if you haven't been to Gyeongju, definitely make it one of your destinations when you visit Korea. It is a must do, must see. Just three or four days I think is perfect for you guys to come out here and enjoy Gyeongju. So uh, thank you again for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time for more uh, soul stuff. So uh, look forward to that and bye.